Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So in this short video, I'm going to talk to you about a couple of my ideas as compared to the bullshit, flawed mainstream formulation of calculus. So, you know, my enemies in the mainstream, and there are many of them, too numerous to count, uh, including uh, top academics, uh, all the way down to their little ass-licking psychophants and you know, their lackeys who are constantly going on the warpath of them. So let's look at a couple of these ideas. Suppose that you want to define the definite integral using the bullshit mainstream formulation. In other words, the integral of this function here from three to five. Because your mainstream definition is ill-formed and based on garbage, you have a lot of work to understand the mechanics that goes into this into this. Uh, symbolism here because most of you are like monkeys actually not like monkeys you are monkeys maybe just a little bit smarter than monkeys so you need an entire course on limit theory first of all okay and a strong foundation in finite difference theory most of you wouldn't even know what finite difference theory is because you're delusional and you suffer from uh, unrealistic uh, opinion of your abilities so you need to be able to know about calculating sums of integral powers, as I'll show you shortly. So your math lecturers and teachers are orangutans, okay? They're a bunch of morons, and they're totally wrong. So let's look at the mainstream definition of definite, definite integrals. So it says that to find this integral or the area of this function between the curve and the x-axis and bound by a and b, you have to do what you see on the right here. Take the limit of the sum. All right. So uh, let, let's, let's do that step by step. So in the next step, we expand this by replacing it by the function, which is 3x squared, right? That's the first step that you see there. Okay. Uh, then you're not done. Let's do some more massaging till we get down to this third line here, okay? And you'll see now that you have, you, between this line and this line, <laughs> You have a lot of arithmetic arithmetic to do and even more arithmetic before you get to this line here because you have to calculate, uh, first of all, the, 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 the middle part, this part here, okay, which is a sum to n terms. So you calculate the sum to n terms. And of course, if it's just natural numbers, it's just uh, if it's just uh, 1, it's whatever the value of n is. If it's natural numbers, it's n squared plus n over 2. If it's squares, <laughs> it's what you see here n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. So, And you're still not finished, by the way. So you can't know the formulas for sums in integral powers unless you've studied finite differences extensively. In other words, you won't know how to get these formulas. And you can't apply to anything but very simple functions like this. Normally, what you do is resort to numeric integration by taking something like Simpsons or trapezoid or whatever. I don't really give a shit. So basically, you come to this step here, and now you do a bit more massaging to get these, uh, to separate these numbers here from n so that you can take the limit, right? And finally, in the final step, you take the limit, which means crossing all these out, and you end up with 54 plus 36 plus 8, 98. Now, just think about all that work that you had to do to find a simple integral, okay? What is this? What is this measure? So, in in the the crappy AP calculus curriculum that Americans use, uh, essential knowledge is what they have gathered together in order to uh, measure the competencies, to describe the competencies, and to teach the competencies. So, what I've shown you above here are these three competencies. I used to teach AP calculus, both AB and BC. So a function and its antiderivative are related by one aspect of the fundamental theorem, and a Riemann sum describes the definite integral in terms of limit and the definite integral of a differentiable function. Now, that's a whole lot of bullshit, but if you see what I've revealed to you through the holy grail of calculus, this is, this is uh, basically where you get your integral from, okay? Because the integral is really just a product of two level magnitudes, 
or what you might call in your mainstream lingo arithmetic means. It's arithmetic mean is a total misnomer because an arithmetic mean has nothing to do with the middle of anything or relative position. And it produces um, this uh, theory, this identity here produces the area as you see over here. Okay. In other words, you get the derivative and the difference quotient. And then to get the area, you just multiply by H, which is this first form over here. Okay. It's this form here. Then the above is the main identity from which both the derivative and definite integral can be determined. So, for example, you know that x cubed is the primitive function and that 3x squared is the derivative. So uh, the terms without a factor of h are the derivative and the terms with h are the slope. Okay. And by the way, this works for all smooth functions, whether they're polynomials, whether they're exponentials, whether they doesn't matter what it is. If it's smooth, this, this identity applies. And how do I know? Because I discovered the theorem and I prove it in my historic geometric theorem, which if I haven't placed a link in here, I'll place a link. So, and, and this is, this is geometric, by the way, it's, it's not algebraic, it's geometric. I'm showing you the algebra because most of you don't really understand geometry. Even your professors are total clowns when it comes to geometry. They have no idea what geometry is about. So in the above problem, x is equal to 3 and h is equal to 2. Therefore, look how you find the, the integral. It's a lot, lot simpler than all the work that you had to do here and everything that you had to learn before you could do it. You need a, at least a six-month course on limits and then possibly a postgraduate study in finite differences. I mean, your, your teachers are absolute imbeciles, total and complete baboons. And what they're doing is producing, reproducing themselves through you. So I'm telling you the facts because I know better than anyone else. Yes, that's right. I said that. I know better than anyone else. So listen to me, morons, because you will learn from me. That is the first aspect, okay? The first aspect is that... Uh, it's much easier to integrate and differentiate using my ideas, not your bullshit ideas, because your ideas are like something that comes out of a sewer or a syphilitic brain. Next, my intellectual inferiors have a very complicated method of finding inflection points, but my new calculus handles them correctly. Okay. And so here's one of the questions I compiled for my... Asian students when I worked in China. Uh, so it basically covers several competencies. It covers uh, decreasing and increasing functions, inflection points, and concavity. So one of these answers here is correct, only one. But how does the new calculus handle uh, inflection points? So, of course, the holy grail, this uh, part that I've described to you here, was realized from the new calculus, but it is not the new calculus. This this identity is from my historic geometric theorem, which is based on Newton's and Leibniz's bullshit and actually explains why their method worked. Nobody before me knew why calculus works. Nobody. Not even Newton, not Leibniz, not you, who is certainly watching this. You have no idea why it works. And you won't unless you study what I tell you. So try to find which is a correct answer and pay attention only to the inflection point aspect. In other words, I don't care about decreasing, increasing. Just tell me which one of these here gives the correct answer. So what you have to remember is that the derivative in the new calculus is given by this expression here, okay? And this, is a, this here is the expression that results in the auxiliary equation, a very advanced concept. You don't have this with the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is just Q of X, H, and it's Q of X, H just gets discarded it's because it's a slope difference. However, this is also the slope difference, and it is always zero. Okay, so unlike your bullshit calculus where you never have the derivative, it just sort of hovers above infinity somewhere as a limit, the new calculus always gives you the correct derivative every single time. Okay, so the slope difference is always equal to zero, unlike Q of X, H. And I'll give you an example now here with a new calculus, and I'll show you that you can simplify the auxiliary equation so that you have this form down here. 
So now if you're looking at the cubic, which we are looking at the cubic, and we're looking at x is equal to zero, we have a simple quadratic in m and n, which are horizontal differences, not like that absolute moron Professor Jack Hazinger thought finite differences. Then the bastard withdrew his critique from Quora and other shit sites, and he never apologized after he had done extensive damage to my reputation. I mean, your, your professors are, they're reptiles. They're insecure pieces of shit, okay? They're, they're evil, malicious, jealous, ignorant people, and they want you to be the same as them. So here you can solve in terms of N or M, whichever you want, and you'll see that you, you can't really find a value for N, okay? And why is that? Because there's an inflection point at x is equal to zero. So the new calculus, you don't have to do the first and second and third and fourth derivative, you morons. You simply show that there is only one pair that will satisfy the auxiliary equation. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. It takes work to understand. That means you can't sit and jack off, you moron, you little piss shit, fresh uh, behind the ears or green behind the ears, whatever they say. You need to study. In the beginning, it's difficult, but it will get easier, okay? I am frustrated because I've been dealing with your fucking, with you fucking morons and your teachers and your educators for too long. You need to wake up. Somebody should really slap the sense into you. So compare this to your bullshit mainstream calculus. You have the first derivative, 3x squared, and the second derivative, 6x. Then you need to choose a very tiny epsilon. And most of you morons don't even understand epsilon delta proofs. They're not proofs, but you don't understand them anyway. Neither do your teachers. Then you need to test if the sign on one side is equal to the sign on the other. And when you do that, if the signs are different, after you've found the first, second, and you've done the test, then there is an inflection point at x is equal to zero. So did you see the easy method in the new calculus? It's very easy. You just solve a quadratic here and voila, you know, you can't take the square root of minus three. Therefore, there is no MN. M and N are actual distances, okay? They, they can't be complex number bullshit. They're distances. So, <clears throat> there are no derivatives at points of inflection in the new calculus, but you can still find the general form. In other words, from the definition that you see up here, <clears throat> you can just ignore Q of X, M, N. In any event, whether there's an inflection point or not, you can ignore Q of X, M, N. So, and you know that there's an inflection point. If the only M, M pair that satisfies this is 0, 0, there's an inflection point. But you can still have the derivative if you, if you suffer from uh, withdrawal symptoms from not having uh, a derivative at points of inflection. Okay, truth is you don't because there is no tangent line at points of inflection. No, 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 don't give me your bullshit. Don't write in the comment section. I know what you're thinking. You're an idiot. That's all I'm telling you. Right, now I'm not gonna carry on because I'm actually a little exhausted. Um, I'll put a link to this article and you can download it and study it and see that I am right and that you're an absolute imbecile. Even if you're a professor of mathematics, even if you won the Abel Prize, even if you won the Fields Medal, you're a moron compared to my intelligence, okay? You're an absolute baboon. Okay, now that's pretty much it. I'm John Gabriel, and this is New Calculus Channel. If you're not already, already a subscriber, become one. Click like. Don't believe the shit that you read about me on the internet. Otherwise, you're just a moron like all those other shitheads who write, who write those shit things on the internet. I'm not a crank. Your professors and teachers are cranks. You are a crank. I'm a real mathematician. I'm not deluded. You are deluded. I don't suffer from uh, damaging psychological uh, illnesses like uh, uh, paranoia and all those things. You suffer from those things. You're narcissists. You're idiots. The only thing I suffer from is depression. And can anyone blame me when I've had to deal with a bunch of fucking morons all my life? That's pretty much it. I'm John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.